Chapter Five: Eigenvalues, Eigenvectors, and Diagonalization. Let's first look at an example before we define what eigenvalues and eigenvectors are. Suppose we have an A matrix, two by two matrix, and this A matrix is like so. And we know if we form the matrix vector product A and V, then it will be V1 and minus V2. For example, suppose we have a V vector here. Then where is A V? Where is A V? We look at A V, and we see that it's V1, same as V1, and then there's a minus V2. That means what we what there's some operation we are doing to the vector v. It's the reflection. It's a reflection operation. This is the reflection of R two about the x axis. V and A V are like a mirror. This is x and this is y. Now a question. We know what A is like and、um, what it does to a vector v. Can we find a vector v such that after we apply A, it's v scaled by c? So after we apply v, we still get the same vector v, but with a scalar c. Can we find such v? For example, let's say we have v vector, v one vector, is equal to the standard vector one zero. Then a v one, what it would be a v one, a v one would be v one again. So in this case, the scalar c. In this case, the scalar c is simply equal to one. As another example, suppose v two is equal to zero one, the other standard vector of r two, then a v two, what is a v two, will be minus v two. So this is another example. Of a v equal to c v, and the c the scalar in this case is equal to minus one, and in this case the scalar c is equal to one. In this case, this v one v two are what we call eigen vectors of a, and these these scalars c are called eigen value. Now let's define eigenvalue and eigenvectors formally. Definition: A is n by n matrix, a non-zero vector v in R n. We say a v, a non-zero vector v in R n, is an eigenvector of A if this is true. A v is equal to lambda v. For some real scalar lambda, and this lambda is called the eigenvalues of A, that corresponds to V. We will be writing eigenvector and eigenvalue quite a bit, so we will use the abbreviation eigenvector will be abbreviated as E V T, and eigenvalue E V L. A question. Is the zero vector an eigenvector of A? Well, the product A and zero vector is indeed equal to the zero vector, right? So, would this make zero vector an eigenvector of A? Let's look at the definition. Indeed, this is a satisfied. This property a v equal to lambda v is satisfied, but for v to be an eigenvector of a, it should be a non-zero vector. So no, zero vector is not an eigenvector of a. 
Another question. Suppose u is an eigenvector of a, and uh, the eigenvalue that corresponds to u is lambda. Is c u an eigenvector of a with eigenvalue lambda? And this is c is not a zero scalar. That's indeed true, isn't it? If a u equal to lambda u, and now if we stick in a c here, a c here, this is still true. So c u is still an eigenvector of a, and the, the eigenvalue that corresponds to this eigenvector continues to be lambda. A related question: Suppose u and v are both eigenvectors of A, and uh, the eigenvalue that corresponds to these two eigenvectors are both lambda. Is the sum of these two vectors an eigenvector of A with eigenvalue lambda? We will leave this as an exercise. In this example, reflection example. When we try to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we use inspection because it's a simple matrix. But more generally, given a n by n matrix, how can we find its eigenvalues and eigenvectors? And that's the first topic that we're going to talk about in chapter five. Here are the three things to be addressed in Chapter Five. First of all, given an eigenvalue lambda, how to find all eigenvectors with eigenvalue lambda, and how to find all the eigenvalues of A. And the last thing, um, we have talked about bases earlier in Chapter Four. And now the question now here is: Is it possible to find a basis, and it's a special basis? The basis consists of eigenvectors of A. So every vector in the basis is an eigenvector of A. Is it possible to do so? And we will find some interesting property when we answer this question. First. Um, suppose we know lambda is an eigenvalue of a, and we would like to find all eigenvectors of a with eigenvalue lambda. We know v is an eigenvector of a with eigenvalue lambda if v satisfies a v is equal to lambda v. Then v is an eigenvector of a with eigenvalue lambda. This is true. If and only if, this is true. We get this simply by moving lambda v to the left hand side, and we combining these two terms together, we get this one. And what does this mean? If v is an eigenvector of a with eigenvalue lambda, if and only if v satisfy this equation. What does this mean? This means v is in a particular subspace. What subspace is that? It's in the null space. It's in the null space of this matrix A minus lambda identity. And of course, to make v an eigenvector, it has to be non-zero. Now we get the conclusion. V is an eigenvector of A with lambda eigenvalue if and only if V is in the null space. It's a non-zero vector in the null space. So if we can find all the vectors in the null space and take out the zero vector, then this is the collection of all eigenvectors with eigenvalue lambda. Let's give the null space a minus lambda identity. This null space a special name. We call it W 
a lambda. This is the null space of a minus lambda identity. And this subspace, this null space, it's a subspace, is called the eigenspace of a corresponding to lambda. And if we take the subspace w a lambda, and we take out the zero vector, this notation means taking out the zero vector, excluding the zero vector, then this set is the collection of all eigenvectors with eigenvalue lambda. An example, we have a matrix here. We would like to know if an 3 is an eigenvalue of a, and we would like to find a basis for this is subspace. By definition, 3 is an eigenvalue of A if we can find a non zero vector such that AU is equal to 3 times U. This in particular means that A minus 3 identity 3U has a non zero solution. Because AU equal to 3 times U can be written as AU minus 3U equal to 0. And uh, this can be further written as A minus 3 identity matrix U is equal to the 0 vector. Now, how can we determine whether this homogeneous equation has a non-zero solution? we look at the rank of this matrix. If the rank of this matrix is less than 3, then the null space has dimension larger or equal to 1, and uh, this homogeneous equation has a non-zero solution. So we apply Gaussian elimination on this matrix, and we find the reduced Rochelin form, and we see that the rank of this matrix is equal to 1, and that is less than 3, so no problem, 3 is an eigenvalue, because this homogeneous equation has a non-zero solution. Now we would like to find the basis for this subspace. This subspace WA3 by definition is the null space A minus 3 identity. And we know how we can find a basis for a null space. We find the general solution of the homogeneous equation. And from this reduced raw echelon form, we can immediately write down the general solution. This is the general solution. And we know u1 and u2, this vector and this vector, will form a basis. This is set as a basis for W3, for WA3.